Hello there. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you a small, a small demo of True Foundry, which is an MLOps platform. True Foundry should make your life easier. If you're a data scientist, if you're a machine learning engineer, if you're a DevOps person, True Foundry makes all of these uh, super easy through a super friendly uh, user experience. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you some of the features uh, that True Foundry provides to make life easier for uh, MLOps practitioners. Uh, you can use True Foundry for a wide variety of things like training models, for uh, deploying models, for monitoring models, for storing models in the model registry. A lot of these features are available on the platform and there's a tight integration between all of these features. So the workflow is super smooth. So I'm going to show you how this works in this particular video. The first thing I want to show you is the concept of a workspace. A workspace is where you sort of provision a certain amount of your cloud for a certain team. So Trufondi can be installed on any cloud like AWS, GCP, uh, Azure, any cloud basically uh, on top of that you can install Trufondi and you get all of these features immediately. And the installation should take you maybe less than 30 minutes. Uh, once you have that, you have this UI for yourself and uh, you can use that to create a workspace, uh, which is the first concept that I want to introduce. A workspace is a smaller division within the entire cloud so that you can allocate to a particular team. For example, let's say you have a team that's working on an image segmentation problem within your company. So then I'll make a workspace called image segmentation. And then I can decide how much resource that I want to allocate to this particular team. So maybe this team requires 10 units of CPU or uh, 20 GB of memory, maybe 2 GB of memory. It's a bit much, and uh, maybe like 10 GB of ephemeral storage. So all of these you can configure, and I can move. I can have more restrictions as well. For example, if I go to the instance family tab, uh, you can decide what sort of instances this team can uh, use. Right? What do I mean by that? There's a bunch of different kind of machines that are available in your cloud, and maybe all teams should not be allowed to use all sorts of machines. Right? For example, G5, G4D, and all of these are like GPU machines, and maybe only teams that are working on really large models or deep learning models might require GPUs. So for a particular team, it might not be necessary. So you can just uncheck the ones that you don't want to provide for that particular workspace, right? So workspace basically provides a way to abstract uh, out permissions uh, to certain groups of people within your company. So once you create this, you can also add collaborators. So let's say uh, you decide who are, the who are the engineers who's going to be working on this, then you can you add them to this particular workspace. So for example, I can maybe make them a workspace member, which means they have permissions to view, edit, create deployments in this workspace, but they probably cannot add other people. They cannot change any of the uh, admin permissions on this particular uh, workspace. So you can add collaborators as well. So that is how you provision resources within the cloud to certain teams. And as you can see here, you can also see the expenditure uh, per workspace as well. So you can see which teams are burning or which projects are burning more money than the others. And so you can make decisions based on that accordingly as well. So now that I have a workspace, let me show you how you can run a training job. In this particular case, I'm going to show you a training job, which is a MNIST training job. MNIST is actually a data set of images that contains images of digits from zero to nine. And you basically have to build a machine learning vision model that will uh, classify this digit as either zero, one, all the way till nine, right? So for that first, I install the libraries that is required. Uh, there are two libraries that is required from True Foundry side. One is ML Foundry. This ML Foundry is used for like, you know, or doing tracking on the experiments. Like for example, you want to track the accuracy, the hyperparameters, all of these, and you also want to save the model at the end of the training. So for that, you can use ML Foundry and Service Foundry is used for the deployment bit. So let's see how that works. So I have already installed this. Uh, yeah, I think it's already installed, but I'll just run this once again. Then at this step, I'm logging in basically, and I'm getting an API key from the platform. So if I follow this link, I can get the API key from here. I'm just logging in here. And then I have to set the workspace. So when I run this, uh, I just have to provide the workspace FQN. So you can get the workspace FQN from here. Uh, for the workspace that we just created, you can just copy the FQN using this button. I can paste this here. And uh, then we are ready to deploy the job to True Foundry. So one question would be, why do you want to deploy a job on True Foundry as opposed to maybe run it just on a notebook, right? For example, this collab also comes with a really good bunch of features for running your notebooks or for, for running your training jobs. But why deploy on True Foundry? The reason why you'd want to deploy a job on True Foundry might be that one, you want to run the job on your own infrastructure so the data does not leave your cloud. Two, once you deploy, you can repeat the trigger so you can run the job multiple times. Three, you can parameterize the job, which means you can take different hyperparameters for every run. So you can have like, you know, for the training job, you can have like different hyperparameters for each of the runs, which makes it super handy as well. But the fourth one is cost is only incurred for whatever runs you do. Uh, after the job is complete, you don't incur any cost after that for, party, for that particular job. And the final thing is we have like really strong integrations uh, horizontally with 
the deployment bit, the monitoring bit, the model registry bit. So that makes it uh, super super convenient to deploy this job onto Foundry as well. I'll quickly take you through the training script. I'm not actually running it here. I'm just creating a file called train.py. Uh, this is the magic command that uh, Collab provides that makes it easy for you to create a file within this environment. So I'm just creating a file called train.py. And I'm taking three arguments here, which are three hyperparameters, con filters one, con filters two, batch size. And I have my model here, which is a vision model. So you have convolution lash. And uh, you can see that the size of the number of filters of the convolution layer is actually a hyperparameter. And uh, this is actually coming from the argument that I'm parsing using arc parse. The reason I do that is because so I want to make our job work in such a way that every time you trigger this job on Reformer, you can provide different values for con filters one, for con filters two, and even for batch size. So these are hyperparameters that you can configure when you're running the job. And that's why I'm using arc parse to get it uh, from the CLI itself, from the command itself, basically. And finally, I also have log model function that I'm calling on ML Foundry library to log this model, which means at the end of the model training, once you have the model that has the updated weights after training, you basically log the model. You basically save the model to True Foundry. And maybe you want to use it later for deployment. Maybe you want to compare it with other models and eventually decide which one to go to uh, production. All of that decisions can be made. But uh, for that to happen, you need to log the model. And that's why you are sort of basically saving the model at this step. So that is a training script that includes saving the model as well. And the other file that I need to create before deployment is requirements.txt with all the requirements for this particular training script. And finally, I have this Python, uh, this Python script that will deploy to, uh, to Foundry. So you can see that I'm creating a job object from service Foundry library. I'm calling the job train MNIST, and then I'm giving the command as Python train.py, and then I'm passing all the hyperparameters I need to pass. So I'm not passing actual values, I'm uh, passing placeholder values like these. So you have to tell uh, this job that these are the parameters that I want to take from the user every time the job is run. You can do that by providing a list of params here. So the name has to correspond between here and here. So when the actual command is called, you will actually fill it with the values that the user has provided when they trigger the job. And you can also provide default values as well. So when you run the actual job, it will be python train.py, con filter 1, 32, con filter 2, 32, batch size 32, or uh, batch size 128, or whatever the values the user provides, right? And finally, I call job.deploy. There's a bunch of other configuration as well, but uh, I will not go deeply into this. You can look at the documentation for understanding the other configuration that you can do when you're deploying a job. So I'm finally calling job.deploy, and this will uh, trigger the deployment. And for the sake of keeping the video short, I've already triggered deployment. So if I go into deployments, go to jobs, I have the train MNIST uh, job that is already there. Now I can actually trigger this, and you should see the parameters that we just described. So maybe I can set this value to 64. I can set this value to 16, 512, and then uh, trigger a job, right? So a new version of the job is running, but you can see that I've already triggered it multiple times and there are multiple ones that has already finished with different values for hyperparameters as well. And there is a field called run details. If you go inside run details, you can see the details that we logged during the run. And that includes metrics like loss, validation, loss, accuracy, validation, accuracy. This was logged in the script. If you go back and look at the script, you can see that we are doing a log metric function call inside one of these callbacks. We have hyperparameters that we logged, epochs, batch size, etc. Most importantly, we also have the model that we logged using the log model function at the end of the script. So you have the model here. Uh, you can look at the details as well, and you can see what are the files associated with this model. Uh, but you actually essentially have a serialized version of the model here, and uh, you can use it further in the future. And you can also reshare it by looking at the ML repo. So if you go back to the code, you can see that this particular ML Foundry uh, run was created for this particular uh, repo called MNIST classification. So if you go to the ML repo tab, you should see the list of runs associated, associated with that with that particular uh, job, right? So every time the job was triggered, one particular run was created. And here you can see things like validation loss, validation accuracy, loss, accuracy, etc. right? And uh, you can actually compare between models as well. So maybe I want to compare between these two. And uh, here I can see, here you can see the loss, how they are different for these two particular uh, runs. So you can make some comparison for these two like this. And uh, finally, you can use one of these models to deploy a service as well. So uh, we'll deploy a service using the one with the uh, best validation accuracy. So I, I, sort this in the descending order and I can see that this particular model 
has the best validation accuracy.